is the oh my god the market is down market update i am your host bill noble if you need a roadmap in crypto subscribe to this channel turn on alerts so you know when we're going live and if the content works for you hit that like button this show is brought to you by my patreon patreon.com unhinged crypto we have a new report in the store on real world assets and DeFi and why it is important. And guess what? Coindesk read the report. More on that later. You just saw that really subtle QR code. You can scan the QR code. The link is in the description down below. And Eagle King will be putting, putting links in the comments of the actual live stream. All right, here's what we're gonna do today. A brief word on the special reports in Patreon and just generally how Patreon works. Followed by news. Followed by why everybody is selling the market on inflation news, which I now consider old news. Want to know about AI? Want to know about RWA? The super merger? Right? Couple reports in Patreon. Got our people on that quickly. Okay? Check that out. Right? We're going to do... News, PowerPoint, I'm going to try to leave as much room as I can for live TA because I know people get upset on down days. Okay, let's see who is here. Crypto Crazy, okay, Alexandro, Bull Runner first up here. Flying Tiger, Lotmo Crypto, welcome. John Aiken, right, some notorious love. Yes, big astrological events are coming and so is volatility. Alexandro, Traveler, welcome, right? Everyone in the world sending me love. I appreciate that, sir, right? Crypto, crypto to cash, taking his beating and keep on ticking. Crypto Tilly with a great profile picture of the original, right? CSS, looking for help. Jersey Shore, Daniel, welcome, right? Art, looking at key, don't let me forget. Don't let me forget. I've actually got pen and paper right here. Trisha is here from Twitter. Welcome to everybody. Welcome to everybody coming in from YouTube and Twitter. Okay, news. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. MicroStrategy became, began acquiring Bitcoin. In August of 2020, according to Arkham, this is the new kind of hot Bitcoin analytics platform, when they purchased 21,000 Bitcoin for a price of 250 million, roughly $11,000 per Bitcoin. So a brief bit of Bitcoin history. When DeFi mania was raging, when ETH was on fire, when you were paying $400 to, in gas, when ETH was proof of work to ape into DeFi. Meanwhile, Bitcoin sat still at 10K and did nothing to the point where Bitcoin maximalists eventually kind of caved and was like, all right, I'll do an altcoin after it got, of course, ridiculous. Meanwhile, Mike was hoovering up all the 10K Bitcoin he could find. And when it went to 20K, which back then was the all-time high, right? 20K was the old 70K. Everyone was like, how is it ever going to get through? Because it went to 20 and then it went to three, right? We'll never see 20,000. We'll never see it again. Mike was like, you know what? Give me all the Bitcoin you want to sell at 20. I'm going to take it at 10 and I'm going to take it at 20. Now, the cowboy attitude eventually got him in a little bit of heat, but the guy took the heat for months. So now what's he going to do? Well, he's going to go right back to the playbook. You guys want to sell it at the all-time high? Fine, I'll take it. That's why when everybody gets too wound up about inflation, like if you look at the dollar higher today, April 1st, yeah, okay, Bitcoin's down 4%. I can imagine back in the day when people were afraid of Fed rate hikes where Bitcoin would be down, you know, disastrously amount today. It's not. It's down, but that's a good thing. The best time to tune into the market update, best time to tune in, best time to get involved, best time to rotate from memes to other areas in the market, down days. Down days. Okay. The AI and crypto worlds have merged to become known as artificial superintelligence. 
a new partnership aims to provide an alternative to large corporations dominating AI. Huh? You mean we want to have AI money uh, in the hands of the people? How about real world assets? How about new forms of banking systems? The future of AI, the future is human. Singularity.net, AGIX, ICP, Ocean Protocol, merging. Yes, they mooned on that. Yes, Fetch is correction, correcting. You may get more correction. You know what? Find a support point. Grab a pen, grab a chart, grab whatever, draw a line, get a bag, and get busy. Insane on a down day, right? Wrong. Because there may come a day, maybe it's not now, but there may come a day where you wish you would get 5% dips, especially if those dips are on old news. Oh my God, Crypto, tw crypto Tilly, right? Talking about my favorite boomer real world asset coin, Raven, right? The old box of chocolates under the bed. Okay, I love this. Investors are focused overwhelmingly, love that, overwhelmingly on Bitcoin over other cryptocurrencies, BlackRock says. Okay, well, that makes sense. It's in an ETF. The normie world is new to it. They want Bitcoin. They understand they're getting destroyed at the grocery store. Inflation statistics are out today. You know, telling us news we, we don't want to hear, but news we know is there anyway. Mainly inflation is, is not going down. But they're overwhelmingly focused on Bitcoin, huh? So, like I said, the real world assets, the banking decentralized, the decentralized Wall Street, decentralized derivatives, huh? the mid cap RWA coins, the mid cap and small cap AI coins, which are featured in Patreon in the latest episode of our podcast, Six Street Crypto. I gave you three small AI coins to add to the Hoover list because NVIDIA is worth $2 trillion. NVIDIA, that's just a chip company for AI, right? So we can only imagine what AI is valued at in legacy. Crypto is a little bit. And everyone's like, oh my God, inflation. Oh my God, I have to sell everything. Yeah, we got profit taking. Yeah, we got some bearish divergences. Okay. But in three days or four days or a week or a month, what do you want to own and where do you want to be positioned? I can tell you right now, it, it's in these, you know, sectors in crypto that you want to like rotate into and try to hodl, particularly when they're down 6%. Now, a other headline that I love, <clears throat> Bitcoin becomes more volatile than ETH as having approaches. Huh? So ETH's not going to move anymore, huh? The media. Ooh, look at this. Bitcoin, 30-day historical realized volatility. In other words, take the amount, take, take Bitcoin's daily movement, stick it into a formula and get a number. Legacy jargon is that's realized volatility. So ETH is less volatile than Bitcoin. So if you took this information and you knew the history of ETH, is it possible, is it possible that sometime around the eclipse or the Bitcoin having the surprise move could be a rocket higher and not just ETH, but ETH versus Bitcoin, right? In other words, when everyone's looking over here, look over here, right? Everybody was looking at bonk and it turned out to be whiff. Now that's not my game. Okay. Like. My game was a cat coin when I like that one, but people forgot over Easter that if you get absurd profits in any one coin, that you should peel some of that off and head on over to some of the coins in our top 25 list. What about render? What about AGIX? What about Jupiter? What about Ando? Right? Anybody talking about that this morning? No, they're all down eight to 10%.
practically Christmas. If it lasts two to three days, it really is Christmas, right? Because where's it going to be in a month? Where's it going to be in four months? No one's looking at, no one's looking at alts. We're looking at alts, but the normie world's not looking at alts. They're going to go, wait, you mean I can get AI coins on Coinbase? <gasps> really? Yeah. When are they going to say that? When it's down or when it's up? We're going to get in when it's down. Okay. So next, next. Just a brief reminder on precious metals. So on the right, we have silver. That's mainly what retail owns across the world. And of course, we have one ounce of gold, which is the equivalent to all that silver. A couple points to keep in mind. One, ETH does better when gold and silver go up. So we're not cheering against our friends in precious metals. But we also want to notice that gold is continuing to go up. Gold is holding rather well with the dollar higher. And gold is being driven by demand in the physical realm, not by the gold ETF. So people are buying and taking physical gold. Now, what does that tell you? Well, it's featured in the new report in the Patreon store about RWA and DeFi. It's the macro case for the assets that we present. Let me put it to you this way. When everyone's talking about inflation, you should be talking about how bad unemployment is, how bad the economy is underneath the surface. The Fed needs to cut rates, wants to cut rates, but everyone's focused on inflation. Soon, I believe this takes a turn and the Fed goes, oh no, the economy's weak and rate cuts happen. Shocking, right? To talk about this on a day when the inflation numbers are horrible, which is exactly when you want to talk about it before everyone's talking about it, when no one's talking about it and no one would talk about it. On the left there, they're buying gold with reckless abandon because they're expecting materially lower rates, which is in 10 words or less, going to be extremely favorable for crypto. Now also covered in the real world asset DeFi report for using futures exchange symbols, $27. If you buy it on desktop, we discuss real world assets. Let me ask you a question. This is Larry from BlackRock. Um, Larry wants to tokenize assets and he wants to put Wall Street on the blockchain. Has anyone asked why? Well, you know, you get better liquidity. Okay. You can sell skyscrapers easier. Okay. But is Larry trying to create his own financial system? Is he trying to make BlackRock less dependent on, let's just call it the financial system and the companies in the financial system? Does he want it running on blockchain? Why does he want that? Are 5% interest rates a problem? Are rates so high that things could break? Oh, I think so. And there's a book out by a very famous person. You don't know him, but he's very famous in terms of his track record. In this report, I'm telling you, this guy is saying the Fed is way behind the curve on rate cuts. And somewhere in here, because of high rates and just because of the way things are with the debt problem that Ray Dalio has talked about, not making this up, there's going to be a problem. And when that problem happens, the Fed's going to have to cut rates. And that's when Bitcoin and ETH and all these things rise beyond speculative assets into things that, you know, become real money, real securities, real technology. You know, it becomes the present, not the future, the present. Okay. Okay, so today's news, April 1st, surprise, inflation is not going down. Manufacturing PMIs, which is legacy code word for the prices producers pay for goods, shows prices are much higher. And frankly, with the shipping disruptions in the Red Sea, this is not unexpected. Meanwhile, the legacy betting machine shows that the odds of a Fed rate cut in June just dropped because inflation is still not good. Okay, so inflation is still not good and that's what the algos are trading today. The bond market looks terrible. It looks like rates are gonna go higher. Crypto's getting hammered. Wrong again is right on time. Okay, that's today's trade.
And maybe it's tomorrow's trade too, until the unemployment number comes around. Okay. And then we get to see what's really going on. Maybe you're going to have to look into fine print. Corrections. Yes. Having money ready for corrections to get into sectors, AI, RWA, you know, DeFi, the future of money, you know, ETH, right? Jupiter. Having money available for that, yes. A multi-day correction, maybe. Okay, after the Bitcoin halving, when the focus falls away from Bitcoin, where's it going to go? Where's the focus going to go? Investors overwhelmingly focused on not Bitcoin. Overwhelmingly ignoring the opportunities in major altcoins, which they are handing out today at a discount. Future Bitcoin scenarios from bullish to bearish. Okay. Coindesk. Bitcoin to buy a cup of coffee. So this guy thinks Bitcoin as a transactional currency. Somebody is underestimating Bitcoin powered games. Oh my God. STX, these layer ones underneath Bitcoin. I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine if Michael Saylor ever figured out how to build killer apps on Bitcoin? Okay. So TradFi takes over Bitcoin. This is a typical thing. Theoretically, when the Bitcoin ETF does become big enough, traditional finance or even central banks could move Bitcoin around the way they move the equity market around using derivatives. Let me ask you something. TradFi Tames Bitcoin is the number three on this list. Let me ask you something. Where is TradFi going to get all the Bitcoin necessary in order to get it into the ETF, in order for them to tame it. Where are they going to get it all? I mean, I am telling people that the beta, <clears throat> meaning the, the faster earning instrument on the way up, isn't necessarily Bitcoin. It's the Bitcoin mining stocks. It's Galaxy Digital. It could be even Coinbase's stock. Where are they going to get all this Bitcoin from? Where are they going to get it from? Okay. Artificial Bitcoin intelligence, okay? No one's giving AI a bank account, but Bitcoin is perfect at a natively digital mean for AI to transact. When they build the supercomputer, is the supercomputer going to want to use the dollar? I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay, <clears throat> so somebody who never met a gigantic massive rally that she didn't like, Kathy Wood's bull case for Bitcoin to get her in the press is 1.5 million by 2027. Now, again, if that is the price target, where are they going to get all this Bitcoin from? Like, you know, Kathy sold Coinbase to buy the Bitcoin ETF. Okay, that makes sense. But what about the mining stocks? And of course, there's also the idea of what does the world look like with Bitcoin at $1.5 million a unit? No one is asking that question, especially since Bitcoin at 150000 is worth more than Bitcoin as a whole is worth more than the ExxonMobil of Saudi Arabia. So if you're at $1.5 million, uh, you've got a very brave new world. Right. And if Bitcoin is at 1.5 million, where is the rest of crypto? You realize crypto isn't even worth 3 trillion. You have multiple companies, multiple companies in the United States worth more than 3 trillion. And the whole ecosystem isn't worth that yet. And they're selling it today. Oh my God, there's inflation. Wow. Really? Have you, have you been, have you been in, in like cryo sleep since 2021? Central bank chair Jay expects inflation to keep cooling in the coming months. In other words, I've got to cut rates. I'm dying to cut rates. Please, please, oh, please inflation go down. I got to cut rates. 
Hey, meanwhile, hedge funds continue to ramp, mercilessly ramp commodity prices. Cocoa looks like an altcoin, okay? Coffee is hurting small business in Asia. <clears throat> People, when you have policy error, when you have central banks make mistakes, the little guy pays. Now, there's not much they can do in interest rates about food. You know, it's weird. You go, you go to buy food in one country like the United States, and then if you go to El Salvador and you buy the same amount, you know, it's, it's really strange. Sometimes I wonder, I wonder about all this inflation in food and things like that. It's like, I don't know. It, 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 it feels like it's gone on way too long, almost like it's artificial, like it's a bubble. You could just wake up one day and it could burst. And then, you know, that's the moment where you realize, oh my God, rates are too high and they have to start cutting. You want to know when you talk about rate cuts, when everyone's talking about rate hikes, that's my opinion. That's probably a little bit too bold. Banks facing 2 trillion of US property debt over the next three years. Huh? Let's see. Brokerage that handled the sale of signature banks loans $670 billion of debt is potentially troubled. This says, of course, nothing about the $70 trillion, according to one source, in government debt that has to be rolled over in the summer. With Fed funds at 5% and the bond market not trading well. Can't wait to see how that works out. Long Bitcoin, short the banks. That's all I can say. Companies rush to issue bonds to forestall market volatility ahead of U.S. elections. Huh. You mean companies want to get their money, get, get into the financial system, get their money, and get out? They're using the election as an excuse. I, I don't think that's the excuse. Okay? Nobody wants to stick around if there's going to be another Silicon Valley bank or if it's bigger than that or if it's something we... Can't yet imagine. Again, Larry wants the rails of the financial system on the blockchain for a reason. Larry didn't just wake up one day and goes, oh yeah, let's, let's make all the crypto heads, you know, let's make the crypto heads happy. Let's, I want to pump everyone's bags today. That's not what Larry's saying. That's not why he's doing it. We got to start asking ourselves, particularly on down days, why is he doing it? Wobbly jobs data leaves central banks on shaky ground. Right? Economists question whether the official reports offer accurate guide to the labor market. What? You mean some of these statistics might not be accurate? Okay, let's see who else is here. Schiller on Twitter, welcome. Dunder, Flying Tiger, talking about Doge. Yes, Doge will be Elon Coin one day. Notice Doge giving a popular entertainment company the business on Twitter. Everyone likes to give Elon Musk the hard time. Wait until Elon Musk moves all these headquarters and then makes not only Doge the official crypto or payment system of X, but he makes Doge the official cryptocurrency of Austin, Texas. Wait until that happens. Wait until... A sovereign state or nation says, you know what? Like El Salvador, like this state, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do some doge. We're gonna, we're gonna have everybody accept doge. Travelers loving ICP. Rudy wants VRA. I can't possibly keep Rudy waiting. Okay. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little live TA first. Okay. And I'm actually gonna remember to share the screen. Sharing the screen. Sorry. Okay. Here comes VRA. All right, people. So we're all looking for a bottom and all we're getting is down 14%. So if you start drawing FIB stuff, Now, the 62% retracement, 
Oops, not sharing screen. Okay, now I'm sharing screen, right? Okay, just in time. The 62% retracement is at 0 0.008. There are a lot of cryptos out there that are doing this right now as we speak. So keep not being dogmatic. VRA has to get above 0 0.0084. Right now, they're running stops below this, making everyone upset. What you want to see across cryptos is it break a level like this and then come back. So this is a good thing to tell people that if you're looking at something that's nose diving, it's, if it takes out the 38%, it goes to the 62%. Okay, so that's VRA for my guy who is on every stream. Okay, this is your market update. Now, this show is brought to you by my Patreon. A brief word on how Patreon works for you. So I wanted to give everybody who watches the market update an opportunity to get the premium research at a low cost price. So the monthly cost to get in is $15, right? $15 a month, podcasts, small, small coin picks on a regular right? Plus to mark and a lot of advanced TA. So if there's a lot going on in the market, you can pay $15 to get in. And then we have a store where we sell premium reports, premium all coins for 12, sometimes 27, sometimes $45. So if the market's hot, 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 you can go shop, shop, shop. But if the market's not hot, you're paying $15. You're not out 150 or $200 a month like other private groups because we wanted the market update nation to come in and stay in, right? So again, we got a new report out on real world assets. Okay. Here's the store. So I've got long-term price predictions, 25 alts for the cycle. You know what? If you had this report, you were on the pre, you were on board before this AI merger thing came out. DeFi and RWA, I got that out quick, fast, in a hurry. Because guess what? There's a reason why BlackRock wants to get on chain. That's covered in here for, in future signals, $27, 27. <clears throat> okay. You go out to lunch, it's more than that. All right. Now, a little bit of comedy about a customer in Patreon. I would like to thank Coindesk for buying the latest RWA report. They called me up this morning and said, Hey, Bill, we want you on the air at nine o'clock. We're going to record a segment. And they were asking me about the RWA report. I was like, wow, you know, they went in there and picked it up. Thank you. We appreciate your business. This goes back. This is a funny Instagram post from February of 2023, where I was basically telling everybody <clears throat> Bitcoin's going to 56 K. Now it didn't quite get there in 2023 but obviously we're there, we're there, right? And you know what the funny thing was about the interview was at the end, she says, can I get a Bitcoin price prediction? And I'm like, well, oh, certainly I'd be happy to give you a Bitcoin price prediction. She's like, you know, not every legacy analyst will give me that. I'm like, I should have said this on the show. It would have been a lot funnier. I mean, my friend, I'm in YouTube. If you don't have a price prediction, you don't have a show. So I told her hundred K she's like, when, Oh, by the end of the year, why? Because they don't like, you know what they love in legacy. They love to buy high and sell higher and they love dips too. They're like, Oh, they're dipping. You mean the crypto heads are giving it to us 5% off right before the supply gets reduced. Wow. Better get in there and get some that's legacy, right? Money just continues to flow in and flow in and Bitcoin actually behaves like the S and P pulling up all the rest of the market, right? Like S and P, the magnificent seven I Nvidia. I mean, what did that do for AI and tax stocks underneath the market? They pulled them all up with it. So get in there right now, Bitcoin. All right. Bitcoin's having trouble at 70 K it's the all time high. I drew this little outside the box trend line. Okay. So we're having some problems at 70 K we had problems at 20 K. Okay. We had problems at 40 K. So what? So what? The dollar's up. Okay. That's a problem. You know what? So what? 
unless Dolly Yen goes to 160 and there's something terribly wrong with like multiple components of legacy. This is my new theory, right? Like inflation bad is isolated, but inflation, the dollar, bonds, yen, if there's a problem in all those areas, okay, yeah, maybe that that affects crypto. But crypto is shaking off a lot of this macro stuff. Maybe it lasts a day. Maybe it lasts three days. Honestly, the longer it lasts, the more of an opportunity it is to move from highly speculative assets, which are going to get really hurt if bonds and the dollar don't cooperate and get that money over into the stuff in the report. You know, your on those, your render. Do you realize render, INJ, and CAS have done absolutely nothing? Tau as well. They have done nothing for a month. Everyone wants to know, like, you know, like I said that at the end of the last stream, and it probably didn't come off right. But I was like, the top altcoins for April are the ones that did nothing in March. Bitcoin didn't do anything in March. You could have Bitcoin well over 80 before the halving, or I think for sure after in May, right? Okay, disinflation narrative dies. Oh my God, inflation. Okay, this is a chart of the bond market, the ZB. Okay, that's a terrible looking chart. <laughs> that's terrible, right? It looks like bonds are going to go down and the dollar is going to go up. It looks terrible. I'm not going to lie. I'm an analyst. I, I, I'm not going to make up charts to make everyone, you know, feel better. I can make you feel better, but not with this chart. Not with this chart. Okay, so there's a problem in the bond market. There's a problem with debt. There's a problem with inflation today. Which, which problem is worse? The price of food, which is not controlled by interest rates, or the employment problem? Okay, the dollar, they just can't stop loving it. There's a head and shoulders bottom. Uh, they're headed for the top end of a channel. Have fun buying this. Have fun. You're going to wake up one day and, you know, Bitcoin. That's all I can say. They're going to have to cut rates three times. Like once they cut, they're going to have to do two more cuts. Because once it becomes obvious that they're behind the curve on that, they're going to need to get after it. This is what you should be thinking about on days when everyone's talking about inflation. If this show has value, we're talking about tomorrow's topics today. Catchy. Whiff. Okay. So, dull coins, massive move. Congratulations to anybody who wrote this. Okay. You had a 13 top on a 90 minute chart, right? Two days later, you came to the blow off top and then it came off. And who knows? This could come off more. Okay. Now, there's a 13 top in dogs and a 13 and a nine bottom in cats. Now, what is my point here? Well, rotate. Always think rotate. Everybody in the current market is still, and they're not going to stop, which is why I'm not going to stop. Everybody wants to like put their money in, hurry up, get involved, FOMO in, because it's like 2021. I got to catch the 7,000% move before it goes to zero. That's what I got to do. I got to, oh my God. That's not the way this is going to work. It's not the way it's been working and it's not the way it's going to work. In this case, I go, okay, maybe I can make this simple. Let's go from dogs to cats. Dogs are up with a 13 top. Cats have a 13 bottom. Now, if that all proves to be incorrect, I'm not worried about it. The point is you want to buy what's down with profits from what's up. And that is going to go on and on and on until you got massive rate cuts and massive floods of liquidity in the market, which could be months away, right? This sector rotation game is very uncomfortable. It was easier back in 2020 when the central banks printed $14 trillion to buy $3,000 worth of every crypto on Coinbase and just sit there and watch it go up. This is not going to be that way. Bull markets are not easy. Bull markets don't let you in. They give you, they don't give you the dips that you want. You're getting one today, but everyone's afraid. So sometimes bull markets don't let you in. And then sometimes bull markets, you know, it's this rotation trade. It doesn't all rally at once. Now, ETH, again, 
everybody in the media is like, oh, ETH's not going to move. ETH volatility. You know, I guess if ETH got wrecked, it would go to 3,300. I was kind of hoping for a massive monthly close above 3,900. I was an Audi. <laughs> All right. I thought this thing was going to explode. Got the inflation number. Humbling moment. ETH is mid-range. Uh, you give me ETH on any support point, I'll take it. Because this is ETH versus Bitcoin. Now, unless ETH versus Bitcoin is going to make a dramatic new low, it, like the biggest diamond you've ever seen is forming. And I just can't help but think that if this diamond does form and ETH turns around and there's any reason for ETH to go up, oh my, especially after the Bitcoin having, right? You get Bitcoin at 77 or 80, like where should ETH be? Really? Like, let's just imagine a world where everybody wasn't doing small caps on Solana. If all that activity was on ETH, or if there was ever a catalyst to go on ETH, where would that take ETH, right? And all the institutions missed Bitcoin. So there's going to be like, you know, where's where's the one X in big caps? You know, ETH 7,000. I mean, Arthur Hayes wants to buy ETH and chill. He thinks it's going to 10K. Everybody has these hyperbole targets. What about seven? What about 5K? Right, ETH versus Bitcoin weekly. There's a 13 bottom. We're waiting for confirmation. Now, switching over to Solana, right? So Solana is has got a 12 and a 9, which means, unfortunately, we're expecting a correction in Solana based on the DeMarc work, and it looks like they're doing it early. So I thought Solana was going to go to 230, and it didn't go there. I mean... It got the two something and then fell off. You're going to get a dip in Solana. Today could be it. Okay. Even if Solana goes back up, you may get another dip in Solana. Like if you're looking to do Solana, do Solana in two pieces, not investment advice. Okay. ETH versus Bitcoin on a four hour chart, one candle away from a 13 bottom. Now, this is my Bitcoin roadmap pattern match. I still think you got one more up thrust in Bitcoin to 77. I'm not selling Bitcoin down 5%. I'm just not, not, not. This is total crypto market cap. I continue to believe there's one more ramp higher. I thought it was going to be March 30th and then the inflation number ruined my pattern match. Okay. Total two could be a range followed by a pop post having. Okay. In other words, the blue is history. The candle is today. So I guess if we have to look at ETH in a range, we have to look at it in a range. I still think ETH versus Bitcoin should be in the strategic portion of your mind. Total three, total altcoin market caps, where again, according to BlackRock, no one is focusing. Even if Solana comes off one or two days, as long as you're in this like upward sloping grinding range, like, you know, everybody's in a big hurry to sell Avalanche at 50 today into support. Why? Right? Altcoins after the halving, like you may have to deal with, you know, you may have to deal with two weeks worth of chop. But what happens after that? What happens if you survive and you play the rotation game right? You could get a match based on history. You could get this ramp. Now, on to AI coins. So, we got our readers in Patreon, in the Patreon store, onto this ICP rally. Now there's a 13 top. Now it's coming off. How hard does it come off? Does it come off for a day, a week? Well, guess what, everybody? If it comes off for two days and turns around, one of the things about the mark signals is it's great when they work. So if ICP just falls apart and the whole trade's over, what an amazing signal. What an amazing time to get out. But if it only works for a day or two and then the rally resumes, now, do you have to make that bet today? Oh, not necessarily. But, but if this correction stops and this starts going up again, then you know it's a mega trend. It's a freight train, especially if these coins are all going to wind up somehow in this super project. AGIX, okay, so you had some extreme FOMO up to $1.45, and they've done nothing but sell it since. 
to the point where on a four hour chart, you're one candle away from a combined 13 and nine signal. So in Tom DeMarc's work, he measures, you know, how long something's been going up and when, when there's going to be a possible reversal or pause. So if you're looking at tactical charts and if something's gone way up and then everybody all of a sudden gives up on it, they love doing that about AI and crypto. Like let's ignore it. Oh no, there's news. Let's buy it. Okay. Let's drop it and ignore it again. No way. Like real world assets, DeFi, AI. I know everyone wants like cats, dogs, and penguins and I get it. That's fun. But let me, let me tell you, let me, let me just give you a brief word about meme coins, right? When you go to Vegas, you go to Vegas and then you come home. You don't move to Vegas. You come home. Meme coins, same thing, right? Like outside of Doge, if you made money in some of that stuff and you held on and you traded and you did well, well, that's awesome. You're you literally, you're a genius. You're smarter than most people because everybody thought Whiff was going to stop. Except for that guy, Hasaka, on Twitter. Now, look at this. You got money that when all this AI stuff, when they unwind the FOMO from the announcement, there's one more puke here and you got an opportunity to get in. Because in this sector rotation game, like psychologically, you can go, you know, we can all be like the Muppets in the Muppet Show and bob our head and go, yeah, you know, yeah, sector rotation. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. But then that means, oh, you mean I have to sell what I love when it's up and I have to buy it when it's down and it's scary? Yeah, man, that's what that means. That's what that means. And that's how the real money is going to get made, particularly if you got the right sectors. Okay. Just as a reminder, this is covered in the real world asset report. Okay. I'm not going to show the book title. Okay. Basically, the title of the book is you always hurt the ones you love about how central banks are making some mistakes. And not only is he saying that, but the central banks themselves have so much respect for this guy that they're actually hiring him as a consultant, even though he's being critical. And his track record is unbelievable. It's covered in the report. It was covered in an article in the Telegraph, and I wrapped it up with all these RWA and DeFi picks, right? And collected them real nice to say, hey, future of finance, real world assets, not the obvious ones, right? I mean, the obvious ones are in there, you know, your Dusk, your Ondo, your Ohm. Okay, that's there. But even the smaller cap stuff, right? The stuff that sort of took off and maybe correct and is going to like stair step up. So you definitely want to check that out. DC Precise is here. Welcome. All right. So that's it for the PowerPoint. Let's see who else is here and perhaps go to some live TA. Okay. I saw somebody crest Loches on Twitter. Spartan number 300. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. So Crypto Tilly wants me to go over when and Ravencoin. Okay. Let's see what we got. Okay, let's go to meme coins first. When? Ugh. Down 14% today, along with all the other cats and dogs. Okay, noticing something important about when that, you know, First, they broke, they broke resistance, they came down, but it failed. And it broke the 38% retracement, which means they could come down to the 62% retracement. So even though I like when, and I have a meme coin that's even way sillier than this that I like, I'm not even going to mention, right? I actually wear the outfit sometimes on the market update, but meme coins are fun until they're not, <laughs> okay? So when, even though I like it, didn't hold support and support may not, you know, they may have themselves another flush here. Meanwhile, in Doge, right? This is your 89 minute Doge chart. Okay. 
kind of a battle going on near the prior high. What is this? Okay. So Doge broke resistance and then came back below it. So it's even happening to Doge. Now, personally, you may have something like this going on where Doge is giving you an opportunity to get in either in some kind of a triangle like this or in some sort of downward sloping consolidation. I know that it's fun because these other meme coins were incredible. And I love meme coins because they bring capital and enthusiasm into the market. They do. But that capital, that enthusiasm, those profits, if they find their way into longer term investment vehicles, it's funny now, crypto, we're talking about longer term. It's kind of comical, right? Meme coins became such an explosive thing that like, you know, render became IBM, which is a joke. Render is not IBM. Render can go to 30. Okay. Moby turning in from Australia. Welcome, right? Pancakes and peanut butter is here after Solana. Okay. So I know somebody was asking for when somebody is asking for crest. Oh no. Somebody wanted Raven. Kind of hope Raven is holding up today. Probably not, but let's check it out. Okay. So Raven coin is the tokenization of everything. Raven coin broke out and is now correcting. This is what I originally saw in Raven coin in this rounding bottom. Okay. Now, if you look at it tactically, we're looking for something like basically what you can do is when you have these like drops that are bothersome to you. So the good news about Ravencoin is that it's hanging out at 38% of its overall up move, right? So I'm showing that as 0.046. And of course they're running stops and making it look terrible, right? This is very typical. It's like, there's terrible news today. So everything's either going to get shattered or this is a process of making it look terrible, forcing everyone out, stopping everyone out right before they take it up. And that, you know, that can qualify, that can go across the board. That can go across the board. Okay. Okay. Ronnie says Rose. And then somebody's looking at boom after that. Okay. Rose. Now, again, tough day, busting a trend line, making it look terrible. What happens? If it's this, because this has happened before. So either the dollar is going to wreck everything, or this is yet another extreme exercise of forcing everybody out. Are they forcing everybody out? Quite possibly. Now there's a difference between risk management and chickening out. It's a very fine line. If you bought Rose up here, you may have to do some risk management, take a loss, take a deep breath and start over. If you bought Rose over here or here and you're taking some heat or your profits are gone, let me just tell you something. When you have markets like this, there's no way you're going to not be upset. Okay. You're not, not going to be upset. You're going to be upset. Okay. Boom. Okay. Not, not a lot of data. Okay. Now what is interesting about this is it's got a square consolidation. That's really interesting because most of these meme coins, when they do really well, they have these square consolidation that goes all the way back to Pepe. 
That goes all the way back to Pepe. So if Bohm actually held itself together here, who knows? That could be a constructive meme coin rotation. Okay, STX. God, STX. This thing, man. I mean, a layer two on Bitcoin. Oh, my God. Or a layer one on Bitcoin. You call this whatever you want to call it. I mean, the diamond target on this is $4.55. Here's how a diamond target is calculated. So first of all, this is a diamond clinic, right? You have a diamond and then normally when you get a breakout, it looks like a God candle. It goes and it doesn't return. Now with this, the target should be the distance of the diamond measured up from the point of the breakout. So that's where I get this like four and a half dollar target from. Right now it's at $3 and 40 cents and they're selling it with reckless abandoned. Meanwhile, if you do the horizontal work on it, the old all time high is right here at 338. Now, Normally I'll get on the market update and I'll be like, why is everybody selling? Well, we know why everybody is selling inflation, which is old news. So we're selling a layer, two, just let's be clear. We're selling a layer one slash layer two on Bitcoin because of inflation, because of a three-year-old story. Now I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Like if I got to manage risk and I got to stop out, fine. Let them stop me out, right? Like this rush up to a new high and this failure, like this is not a good looking candlestick. I'm going to make them wash me out. And even if they wash me out, I'm just going to wait four or five days and I'm going to come back. Because there will come a time in this bull market where you don't get these 10% washouts. You don't get these 10% washouts. Okay, Julius Max wants to talk about Rune. What an excellent idea. Let's talk about Rune when they're killing it. It's the perfect time to talk about it. All right. So the thing that's funny about live TA is that you'll be surprised to know that I, I don't know everything. I don't. And I got to chart and figure it out just like you do. So right now, Rune looks tough to figure out. I would say Christmas in Rune would be a move to this FIB number at 7.1. Now, the question is, what's the price prediction? That's a different question. So the price prediction on Rune goes something like this. First of all, What's the all-time high in Rune? 21. That, that's a price target. Everybody's price target, okay, is 21. Now, this is called Fibonacci extension analysis, okay? Your targets in Rune are as follows based on this extension analysis. $11.40, $17.50, and possibly by the time there's a major top 30. Why? Because people on Rune can go seamlessly from Solana to Bitcoin to Ethereum, just seamlessly on ThorChain. And that's the upside target, but let's all fall all over ourselves to sell it at $8 when the prior high in Rune the prior high is like $7.20 or $7.40. So this is like a dollar, which is a big percentage move. This is like 50 cents away, excuse me, 50 cents away from major support. So your risk is 50 to 60 cents to make $22. $22. Okay. Do Doge I did one thing about Doge that I will note on a bigger picture basis.
is if you look at Doge, right? And I've seen guys on Twitter cutting up Doge six ways to Sunday. But this is what the Doge early move, this is what the last parabolic looked like, right, in Doge. Like, this is the historical massive ramp in Doge. Okay. My target was a do 72 cents by March of 20, was it? What was that? Right. That's supposed to be March of 2024. Well, we didn't get there. But the point I'm trying to make is this. And this has been made in whiff. When Doge took off, Doge took off and just kept going. Now, is Doge like whiff? I don't know. But can you wake up one day and have Elon make an announcement? Yes. This was what I was looking for. 72 cents. Doge is a top three. Right now, it's top 10. I think it's top three. Okay. Rune, I would check crap, Kraken and Crypto.com. Cross-chain, like STX and Rune. Like if you don't know what to do in cross-chain, like STX and Rune are a place to start. And we, we put a small cap DeFi play in our top 25 altcoin list because there's no way cross-chain is not a narrative just like there's no way real world assets is not a narrative, just like there's no way AI is not a narrative. Okay. Okay. Chris talking about hi fi was yes, <laughs> yes, right. Some of these DeFi plays, right. Okay. So Billy is asking about FET. So, you know, FET is having a hard time. All right. And then we're going to put the AI super merger to the test. Right. So, you know, there's a big move happening in FET. Let me just label this. You know, and this is tough about markets, about bull markets, and about the fact that even the guys you know on YouTube don't know everything. So, Fetch made a new high. And the momentum indicators did not make a new high along with it. And now Fetch is coming off. And basically, that's a recipe for a very big down move. That's a recipe for a huge flush. Now, if you get it, amazing. A week from now, you'll be able to enter Fetch and, and, and ride the next wave. My question is, what if you don't get a huge flush? What if Fetch actually stops? Now, is there a stopping point that's natural? It's a little tough to find, but let's look. Let's look. Right? In other words, it's easy to say, I'll sit and wait. Sometimes. Right? I'll sit and I'll wait. But frequently, if you wait too long, the market can leave without you. That's kind of the opposite sometimes of what people say. Like generally you want to make them sell it to you at a good price. The 62% retracement of the, the merger ramp is 279 in fetch. Or you could say it's 280. Noticing how it's kind of like pulling up short of that level. Maybe they take it below it. Patience is good. Like if you didn't FOMO in, that's good. Now, worst case scenario in fetch. Just to be transparent, this could be a head and shoulders top, which would mean the worst case scenario in fetch is the whole rally unwinds and it goes to 240. So maybe if you missed it, maybe you hold out for 240. My sense is the, the, the narrative is going to go from inflation to the economy. If that's right, 280 will hold. If it stays inflation and the bond market falls out of bed, you're going to get it at 240. But again, this is on the top 25 list. Just telling you right now, right? Matthias, nice to have you back. Nice to have you back. PJL. Okay. Don't have that. Don't have that. Caspa. Yes. I would love to look at Caspa. Why? Because Caspa has done nothing. It has done nothing. 
This was like up only, right, all of last year, and then it's not doing anything. Now, as you can see, I'm working on a long-term price prediction in CASPA. So I'm playing around with Fibonacci ranges and channels. And wouldn't you know, the CASP down right around, I don't know, right around 13 cents. Huh. Maybe there's some support there and some outside the box TA. Huh. Look at them selling this thing today down 5%. Look at them selling it. Layer ones. Let me ask you something. How is Larry going to get the whole world on the blockchain without multiple hot new layer ones? Who's talking about the hot layer ones? Who's talking about the hot layer twos? Uh, nobody except us. That's coming to the Patreon store soon. No one is talking about these things. What do you want to get involved in? The things no one is talking about. So if they hit AI, if they hit RWA, Unless it's a complete disaster and the bond market craters and the dollar index goes to 106, anything short of that, you want to have your eagle eyes on, right? Crypto Tilly saying Kava might have some traction. You want to talk about like boomer coin from the last cycle. Okay. PJL says SUI, S U I. It's probably not how you say it, letting my Southern football come through there. Okay. If you look at a four hour chart, okay, this is SUI, right? This is kind of classic what it did. I can already tell by looking at it. Look how they wicked it down to the 62% retracement. Look at this wick, right? You think you like a coin and then it does something like this where it goes straight up. And then they're wicking you out at a dollar eighty-three, and then it comes back. Now I know it's volatile, but if you're a bull and you're long, and this is like the final final word: if you're bullish and you're long, expect to be tested. Why read research? Why go get yourself a fifteen-dollar membership? Why shop in the store? Because you're going to get tested, and when you get tested, it's good to have research to lean on, right? The emotions are going to occur. There's a one-day drop, a three-day drop. Well, we don't know yet. If they drop it for three days, it's Christmas and you want to be ready to rotate. All right, Willie, appreciate everybody joining the stream today. Pedro, we will see you next time.